Yeah, hi friend, uh, welcome back again and uh, thank you for uh, enrolling to my course. I think, uh, hope I will try to give a better understanding on this. So now I am going to explain on a business scenario. So let's take uh, the business scenario here. What I'm trying to um, give you here is, this is a business scenario. So now let's say um, in the business, uh, a company purchase for 800K, uh, the cost of the missionary. So let's say, I should say cost of. So now this cost of missionary, let's say at the end of the life, we don't have any uh, residual value or salvage value is zero. So now the useful life of this asset is five years. So let's say in other words, you can say 60 months as well in the case of months. So the production capacity for in the units, you can see 1,20,000. And the planned units per year. So we divide this by uh, considering uh, the, what do you call, um, uh, the total capacity of the missionary divided by the life of the asset, which is five years. So then you derive what is the planned units uh, for a year. Now, another thing is here is a planned units in period. So you can see here planned units and the per period is 2000. So this is a planned data, okay? So actual may varies um, when it comes to a real business world, okay? So now the depreciation per unit, you can see by considering the total capacity divided cost of the asset divided by the total capacity. So this is the per unit depreciation, plan depreciation, okay? So now you can see here in our table, I clearly explain how it works. So if you look into this table, sorry, for a moment, uh, yes, so here, you can see under production method, this is the cost. So this is the purchase price and the cost will never change across the five years. And this is the plan depreciation, which is actually, uh, you can see, sorry, planned units. So I should say this is a planned units. Units, yeah, so it makes sense, right? So now um, let's say here we say also units and here and uh, depreciation per charge per year. So I taken total cost divide by total capacity and multiply by how many units planned for each year. So 24,000, so you can see this is the per unit, uh, sorry, per month, how much is the depreciation. So when it comes to per year, is this is the one, and when I divide this by 12, is the one, how much is per month, the depreciation. So now you can see this is the accumulated depreciation, and the accumulated depreciation will accumulate for each year by adding the previous year depreciation. So hope you understand now what is the written down value. This can be called as a net book value or a written down value. So anyway, in, in the accounting point of view, you can call, yeah? So I put as a written down value, so cost minus total accumulated depreciation, you can see. So at the end of the life, it's a value is actually gone to zero, usually the normal business, they keep one dollar or one unit as a one, 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 number one as a scrap value at the end. So now, when it comes to the period, so you can see. Here, sorry, I cannot put uh, the digits for a number of units. So number of units is always must be a, what do you call, um, the absolute number, okay? 
it cannot be going into, you can't produce off unit, it doesn't make sense, right, isn't it, yeah? So in this case, uh, you're going to produce um, total units is this, and then remaining units, here you can see it will be how it is the remaining units, the system automatically calculate by taking out so do the 2,000 per month. So now when you multiply the amount here, which is 6.67 per unit by number of units produced, you can see this is a depreciation per unit, which is actual here uh, per month. So when here is this one. So now how you are going to maintain, so this is actually, um, the per month, you will be knowing at the end of the month, this mission is how much is units produced. So you can enter as a, as a, an, as a key user uh, uh, on the business, they are going to enter this value in the system. So before maintaining, sorry, before executing the depreciation run, which is actually I mentioned here in my previous training in the, um, planned depreciation run. So here, you are going to, before you run this planned run, the key user going to the system, SAP, they are going to maintain number of units produced for each month. So because this total unit never change, but per the number of units actually produced may change. So um, now in our case, in this scenario, I am not taking a different figure for a actual. So I assume my actual is also planned. So but in a real world, actual will not be planned all the times. So um, this is not a depreciation per unit, this is depreciation per month. So this is a per month. Okay, this is a total unit. So, hope this is a depreciation, let's say, per month. So, hope this business scenario help you guys to understand better. So, I just put it uh, here in the Excel to explain you better. So, um, in the layman point of view, um, sub the people who are in the accounting background, yes, they can really understand better than um, um, before when I, when I just try to put here the figures here. So the people who don't have any accounting background may be, yeah, so it's a bit uh, difficult to understand, but uh, when it comes to a difference of actual and planned, how much difference, uh, what is over and under absorption on all these uh, will be a different uh, um, different topic, okay? So that will be covered under cost accounting and, and relating to this depreciation. So uh, yes, this is the business scenario. So we are going into uh, the system. So to, to, to do how, so what needs to be done? So for, for calculating depreciation um, like this, what you need to do? Where do you maintain uh, the, the number of units? And, and also, um, uh, what is the, the depreciation key uh, need to be created? And, and, and this depreciation key is how it will be uh, configured in the SAP. So I'm going to, um, yes, provide those details in our next session. Thank you, guys. So now we are done with the business scenario here. So the next thing we are going into a configuration settings in SAP, okay? So I'm going to explain um, uh, in the configuration setting what are all the things you need to do before creating a asset master. Thank you.